Coming up, the ATC prevarications continue. We set the record straight. Something new from Garmin and Waco. Piper from the inside out. And aviation as a way to make our kids smarter. AOK Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and flying with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Well, we get a bit of a breather. I'm Tom Haynes. Melissa is on assignment this week. Friday, President Trump signed the FAA funding extension bill. The good news, the FAA continues operating for another six months. The bad news, that's six more months for the airlines to lobby Congress for H.R. 2997, the bill to privatize air traffic control. But the bill's author says he wants to get a vote on it early this month. House Transportation Committee Chairman Bill Schuster has waged a multi-year effort to give air traffic control to a non-government corporation controlled by the airlines. And he's not happy that the general aviation community opposes his giveaway. I have introduced H.R. 2997, the 21st Century Air Act. Like all major reforms, there have been false claims made against this bipartisan bill. The false issues I want to address is from general aviation. But H.R. 2997 supporters have been spreading plenty of untruths about our air traffic control system, a system that is the largest, safest, and most efficient in the world. For example, Chairman Schuster put out a press release this week repeating an op-ed in the Detroit News. In the opinion piece from former Clinton official Dorothy Robin, she claims that, quoting here, controllers rely on 1950s radars whose limited precision requires wide safety buffers between aircraft, and pilots zigzag between terrestrial navigation aids because they can't access the satellite-based GPS technology available on our smartphones, end quote. Okay, after you stop laughing, here are a few points that you can pass on to your family and friends, and most importantly, your member of Congress. So let's start with GPS. Anybody who flies knows that GPS is the primary navigation source for general aviation. The airlines, well, some haven't equipped, and less than 1% of airliners are equipped to fly LPV approaches, which rely on GPS WAS. Well, that's not the FAA's fault, and it isn't something a privatized air traffic control system is going to fix. This map shows the growth in the number of RNAV, T, and Q routes that don't require flying directly between ground-based navigation aids. Now, here's a flight from Los Angeles to Seattle via airway Q11. I don't know about you, but I don't see any zigzags along that route. In fact, the first RNAV approached based T routes were established in 2005 through the Charlotte Class Bravo. You can see them here in blue, and the FAA just keeps adding more of them. Okay, now let's talk about that 1950s radar. Truth is, controllers haven't been relying on basic radar since the late 60s when the so called secondary radar system was installed. That's what your transponder talks to, and it's more accurate and gives more information than primary radar. In fact, controllers usually turn off primary radar on their scopes. They usually use it only in an emergency. But there's an even better system already installed across the country. You've heard of it. It's called ADSB. And as the map shows, it's already everywhere. So controllers could be taking advantage of ADSB's greater precision and detail and reduce the spacing between airliners, except many of the airliners aren't equipped. And as we've told you before, only one sixth of airliners have ADS-B out. That's about 1,100 aircraft. Yet more than 28,000 GA aircraft are already ADS-B out equipped. So again, we ask the question, how is a privatized air traffic control system going to fix that? So despite some fits and starts, the FAA is pretty much on schedule with NextGen and modernizing the air traffic control system. Now, there is some truth that the annual congressional budget process has, in the past, made planning and building a multi-year project a bit more difficult, but there's a solution for that that doesn't require privatization. We say that we can't obligate funds for a future Congress. You know, so the 115th Congress, for example, cannot make a bill that that forces the 116th Congress to spend money. We say that, but yet we do it all the time. Now, one of the ways you do it is under scheduled procurement and review. For example, 
Uh, let's say we need new aircraft carriers. Well, that's not an overnight thing, right? So that's going to span a couple of sessions of Congress, maybe even three. Uh, and so what they would do to fund that is that they schedule, okay, so much in this Congress, reauthorized in the next Congress, subject to their approval, reauthorized later, and, that, and that's where you get into that. Since they've started with some of that scheduled procurement with NextGen, it's been on track in the last several years because they've done it that way. So as I said earlier, the airlines and the administration pushing hard for privatization. A vote could be scheduled within a few weeks. That's why it's so important to call your member of Congress and say that you want them to vote no on H.R. 2997. And here's some great news on another AOPA initiative. More than 20,000 pilots are now approved to fly under Basic Med. 20,000 just since May 1st. Basic Med allows you to exercise most privileges of a private pilot certificate without a third-class medical. You can find out all about it on our website, including a quick test to see if you could qualify. Well, Garmin has a new touchscreen flight display out. The touchscreen G500 TXI, the G600 TXI, and the G700 TXI flight displays come with three display options. With a large 10.6-inch display and two versions of a 7-inch display in portrait and landscape orientations. The clean sheet design is said to work faster and smoother. We hope you join us this weekend in New England. The OPA fly-in to Groton, Connecticut is happening Friday and Saturday, the 6th and 7th. Fall colors are in peak glory and you're sure to have a nice flight in. Find all the details on our website. Hope to see you there. And coming on the heels of the Groton fly-in is the AOPA fly-in to Tampa, Florida, presented by Peter O. Knight Airport on October 27th and October 28th. If you're coming to Tampa, you will have a chance to fly out to the Piper factory in Vero Beach. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran shows you what the tour will be like. From legendary Cubs to the modern and powerful M600, this year Piper Aircraft is celebrating 80 years of building general aviation aircraft. Pilots who fly into Vero Beach will have a chance to see where all of the Piper airplanes are made. And over the years, tens of thousands of airplanes have been built right here. Production started on Cherokee in the spring of 1960. And as of today, we've built over 77,000 Cherokees. Piper also makes all the airplanes from the M series line here. Visitors on the tour will get to see all the steps of the production process. Now, unlike a lot of companies that outsource parts to Mexico, to China, et cetera, we do most of the fabrication assembly here. So you get to see raw material end up being a finished product, start to finish. Raw materials are machined into a variety of parts using CNC and water jet cutting machines. Wings and fuselages are formed, composites are sanded by hand, and wiring harnesses are carefully assembled. All parts are meticulously inspected along the way. At the end, all the pieces start to come together in final assembly. There's an amazing amount of work that goes into creating all the parts to make an airplane. There's over 132 plus thousand manufactured part numbers flowing through the plant at all times. The Piper Tour is an event not to miss and the perfect way to celebrate 80 years of Piper aircraft. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. Sounds like a great time. However, if you're interested, you need to act now as registration closes on Friday, October 7th. To find all the details and sign up, visit aopa.org slash Tampa. Coming up after the break, version 1.1 makes a great app even better and soaring to success in STEM through aviation. You're watching AOPA Live this week. The smoke is on. He's giving everything that he's got. The Red Bull Air Race World Championship returns to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, October 14th and 15th. Tickets now on sale. Welcome back. There's a new scholarship program at the University of North Dakota, one of the premier aerospace schools in the nation. The James C. Ray Memorial Freshman Endowment has some $1.5 million to award scholarships to first-year students at the university. The endowment honors philanthropist James Ray, who had a very special interest in making a difference in the lives of young people. But his passion, his absolute joy in this world, was inspiring young people to seek to do things beyond what they think they can and, and be that 
aviation, which in his world, in his life, was a watershed event uh, that proved to himself that he could do things he put his mind to, to becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, the uh, passion and the aggressiveness and the, the style of a uh, person that can start a business from scratch and, su and succeed. Very inspirational to James. Presentation was made in front of the UND Aerospace Legacy Wall, a display honoring Ray's contributions and others he had encouraged to contribute to the university. James Ray passed away in April at the age of 94. And a couple of unusual looking airplanes to tell you about. You love a classic Waco biplane, right? And you love an amphib? Well, now you don't have to choose. Waco is showing off photos of the YMF-5F. This red beauty sits tall on amphibs, so let me ask you, where would you take it? And Bell has begun restrained ground run tests on the V-280 Valor prototype. The tilt rotor design is designed for the Army. First flight expected this fall. Well, you can't fly your drone near landmarks like Mount Rushmore, Hoover Dam, or the Statue of Liberty. The drone restrictions became effective last Tuesday and reflect official concern about terrorists using drones in the United States. Uh, I think we do know that terrorist organizations have an interest in using drones. Uh, we've seen that overseas already with some growing frequency, and I think the expectation is uh, it's coming here imminently. Um, I think they are relatively easy to acquire, relatively easy to operate, and quite difficult to uh, disrupt and, and monitor. You can read more about the restrictions, including a list of all the places where they apply, on our website. You told us you wanted more, so we're giving you more in the updated AOPA app. Version 1.1 is now available in the Apple App Store and Google Play. You can now rotate between portrait and landscape views, for example. We've also added pinch zoom. Some new sections as well, including advocacy and products and services. There you find things like aviation insurance and financing, including a loan calculator. Of course, you can stay on top of all the news in general aviation with the AOPA app, as well as all of our latest videos. And the AOPA app is in the Apple App Store and Google Play. And finally, the AOPA You Can Fly team is hard at work growing the pilot population. One of the four main pegs in the You Can Fly program is the High School Aviation Initiative. AOPA is working to develop curriculum that will help educate tomorrow's aviators. This year, 29 schools across the country are doing a field test for the first year of the curriculum. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop visited one of the test sites. She's in with her right now. Flying is the the greatest thing in my opinion, so this is honestly really a good class for me. We have lots of fun. Flying, fun, and building a strong future. What more could you want in a ninth grade classroom? What's been great is all the kids that are in the class are, they're loving it. Every topic, every activity, they're like gung-ho, they ask questions, they share the knowledge that they already have. Andrea Appleman is the teacher who's testing the AOPA curriculum. She's an award-winning educator, and the aviation content passes her test. The curriculum has been fantastic as far as the pacing, having everything laid out, having everything said and very organized. I mean, that's been probably the easiest part of my school year so far. But for these students, it's opening doors. We've learned about space and we learned about drones and general aviation, military aviation. Maddie Emerson is interested in aerospace engineering. At the next table over, Lee Collins thinks drones are pretty interesting. Give me a good insight of what I need to do. In Ada, Oklahoma, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. If you know a teacher or school administrator who may want to learn more about the aviation curriculum, AOPA is here to help. The You Can Fly team is hosting the 2017 AOPA High School Aviation STEM Symposium. It's a gathering of educators where ideas are shared and information about the curriculum are discussed. It's coming up on November 6th and 7th in Fort Worth. AOPA Senior Director of the High School Aviation Initiative, Cindy Hasselbring, says it's a great opportunity. We have plenty of breakout sessions for them from Aviation 101 for the non-pilot all the way to building an airplane at your school or flight training at your school. Sign up on our website. There you can also find more about the symposium. And that's our show this week. Thanks so much for watching. Next week, both Melissa and I will be in Las Vegas for the annual convention of the National Business Aviation Association, which always makes news from the high-flying side of general aviation. See you next Thursday.
The smoke is on. He's giving everything that he's got. Oh, I love it! He's there! The Red Bull Air Race World Championship returns to Indianapolis Motor Speedway October 14th and 15th. Tickets now on sale.